Hey guys, it's Rachel, and oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Girl, we got some tea to spill today. Before I get started, I just want to say that every story has three sides. My side, his side, and the truth. Today, I am telling my side of the story. This is from my point of view. His point of view and his perspective is probably totally different. If he will ever see this video, I don't know. Probably not, but just in case. All right, let's get right into it, shall we? And I'm sorry in advance, this video is probably gonna be really long, but every single time, like every time I turn around, I find something else that just like flips it upside down and I'm like, girl. What? So let's rewind all the way back to November of 2017 where this story first took place. Back then, I had a couple month streak with this guy on Snapchat. And let's just call him, for the sake of this video, Pete. So me and Pete, we talked for a while because like we've never met before. We just had this streak on Snapchat. He kept asking and like persisting to hang out because he thought I would be a cool person to hang out with. And so it never really worked out until one day I was like, he said something. I was like, okay, look, if you really want to make plans, if you really want to hang out, let's make them right now. Let's make it happen. So that's what we did. We made plans for like the following week at that time. And I am not going to say much about that day because it is actually in a vlog. So if y'all want to creep and find out who Pete is, it's in a vlog somewhere. <laughs> From that day, we made plans, like we kept making plans to hang out. We kept, you know, talking every day and kind of came this thing where we both really liked each other and we were starting to talk, right? From the beginning of this situation, he, he told me he was going into the military. I'm not going into detail what branch, but just know it was the military. So he was going to be leaving in the spring which didn't leave us a lot of time. And like, you know, I really wasn't thinking about it. You know, he briefly kind of told me about it in the beginning and like, whatever. But then as we kept talking and as we kept hanging out, going on dates, and it just kept persisting, right? We were doing things like couples would do all the time. We would hold hands in the car, you know, we would um, kiss at red lights, we would cuddle, we would watch movies, you know, all this kind of like little cute, like lovey-dovey stuff like, you know, um, you do when you're first talking to someone, you know, whatever. And just kept like growing and persisting and moving forward, right? Fast forward a little bit, in I want to say like January-ish, he told me one day, he was like, look, can we talk about something? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's talk about something. And he told me, he's like, I'm not looking for anything serious because I'm going to go in the military, um, but I really do want to date you. Side note, side note. <laughs> Side note, this is so important to this story. So very important. Now, he has told me, even from this point, and the entire time, the entire time we talked, the entire situation, the entire time, throughout the entire time, multiple, multiple, multiple times, he has told me that he really wants to date me, but he didn't want to because he was gonna be leaving for the military he really liked me he really wanted to date me he told me that so many times he wanted me but he was going to be leaving and he didn't want anything serious because he didn't want to hurt either of us when he told me that originally i was like oh my god like i realized wow like i'm really like liking this kid like I didn't realize like I was really starting to like him like I was developing feelings for him and I'm like oh. I was kind of bummed when he said that but at the same time I kind of played it off and I was like okay it's fine like I'm planning to move to California you're going to the military like it's just not you know not the right timing and that's fine like we can still keep hanging out and doing what we're doing until you leave because he was leaving before I was obviously because I'm still here <laughs> So this entire time um, that we were hanging out and everything, we just continued to do what we were doing, but we both knew that it wasn't going to move forward any more than what it was. And so that's why I 
thought in my head, like I thought of it as a unofficial winter fling. Hence, my last short film that I did was about the situation. Four months flew by, four months. So he was leaving at the end of March. Now, his birthday was in March, and the last time I hung out with him was actually on his birthday, which personally, I don't know how much it meant to him, but personally, I thought that was really cool because it was his birthday, it was his 20th birthday, and he decided to spend the last half of it with me. Like, he could have done anything else in the freaking world, but he decided to hang out with me on his birthday. That was the last time we hung out, and that was the last time I thought I was gonna see him. But actually, he left his wallet in my car, and we didn't realize it until two days later. So, I left work two days later, and he was blown on my Snapchat. He's like, I left my, I think I left my wallet in your car, and I found it, and so I drove to his house, gave it to him. And that was the last time I saw him. I actually drove out of his neighborhood for the last time. I started bawling. And I, it started to really, really hit me that, wow, I actually fell for this kid. I fell for Pete. And literally, I had all these feelings for him. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to see him again. Like, I've never been in this situation. I've never dealt with anything like this. And I didn't know what to do. I literally did not know what to do. It was like the entire time, like this, over the course of like these four or five months or whatever, I knew, like we both knew that the time was coming that he was going to be leaving. But I think because of that, I knew it wasn't going to like go farther, that it wasn't going to happen or whatever. That I think I kind of pushed my feelings like aside or like pushed them like deep down. And I never dealt with that. I'm like, I really, really like this kid. I really cared about him. And what do I do? You know, what do I do in a situation like this? Because we both agreed we weren't going to be together. So once he got his phone back, when he was done with boot camp, it was about one month out of his boot camp. And the shit started to happen. You know, he's hundreds of miles away. He's at tech school, whatever. And... We still talk. We, we still talk every day. There was times, like, we talked about us and stuff, and, like, we still like each other and, like, whatever. And it was just still the same. We talked the same way we did before he left. Like, it's still, it was still the same. So, basically, I just told you kind of, like, the backstory of me and Pete. Just so it would make sense what I'm about to tell you. And how fucked up this story gets. <laughs> so, this part... Oh man, I don't even feel it anymore, but man, during this time, this was actually like probably close, holy shit, this was like a month ago. Wow, my life has been different. A month ago, I was so livid, so livid. We're gonna reenact this shit. <laughs> we had 200 something day streak on Snapchat, correct? I would, you know, I fall asleep kind of early sometimes because I work really early in the morning. His Snapchat was always the first one I'd open every single day. And I opened his Snapchat. You wanna know what it said? Let's call this person, this other person. Let's call this other person Jamie. I opened Pete's Snap and it said, I'm dating Jamie, by the way. I don't know if I told you or not. In my head, I was like, I had a gut feeling, I had a gut feeling that it was her. And rem let me remind you, this, me and Jamie went way back. We used to be friends. Keyword, used to be. But here's the thing, I never had a problem with her. I've never had an issue. We just kind of, it's just like one of those friendships where like you outgrow each other and just kind of you have separate lives as you get older. Like, that's kind of it, right? Honestly. I never got to tell him this, but I've told all my friends this, that, like, I would not have been this livid, this, like, upset if it was someone else. The reason why I got so mad and upset was because it was this person. And side note, also, I am... I wish I would have wrote this shit down or screenshotted this shit because I don't remember a lot of these conversations completely clear, but I remember most of what they said. And the order might be slightly off. I can't remember exactly. So I responded. I was like, um, no, you didn't. LOL. And I was like, who's Jamie? 
And so the entire time I'm just like freaking out and I'm like, oh, I'm so pissed. Like I'm so freaking pissed. Fast forward a couple more hours. So I'm at work, I'm on break. I check my phone, check Snapchat. And I see I have a Snapchat from Pete. I open a Snapchat and he's like, um, I'm sorry, I thought I told you. And then here it comes. He tells me her last name and it's exactly who I thought it was. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I used to be friends with her. Like, woo! I was so pissed. This is another reason why I got so very upset was because this exact same shit happened to me with my ex-boyfriend. If I have to relive another fucking thing from that toxic bullshit, like, shit that I had to deal with for like six years, oh my god, no. No, I will die alone. Like, I will never go through that shit again. I will never tolerate any shit that I've went through with that guy when I go to lunch. And he's like, please don't be mad. Like, he did not want me to be mad. Like, he literally begged me not to be mad. He's like, I didn't know you guys were friends until after the fact. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I don't think that's okay at all. Literally, I go on Facebook. The first thing on my newsfeed is Jamie posting screenshots of Pete's Snapchats, and it just made me so sick. It made me so fucking sick because like I said, I dealt with this shit with my ex-boyfriend. With this emotional abusive bullshit that I had to deal with for fucking years. It just triggered me because back then, like, we were so on and off and, like, we were together, we were not together. It came to the fact of, like, we never knew what we were because it was so bad. It was so back and forth. So, like, when we were not together, he would date other girls. And so we would, were friends on Facebook, and so I would see that shit all, all the fucking time, all up and down my newsfeed. I'd see shit he was tagged in, I'd see shit he, he posted about other girls, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I had to act like I was okay, and I had to act like that was fine, but no, that was fucking killing me because I was in love with that guy. So, I'm sorry, I'm not going to see that again, I'm not going to watch that happen straight to my face again. Like, fuck that. And so I screenshotted it, I sent it to Haley and Dakota, I was like, look at this, like, what the fuck is this? I screenshot it and then I deleted her because I'm like, there's no way I am looking at this, no. And so also, I was also having like, these thoughts of like, am I being crazy? Like, do I have a right to be mad? Like, we weren't together, like we were never dating, like we were never a couple. So I also felt like I was crazy because I was getting this mad and upset about it. But then I was talking to Haley and Dakota about it and they both told me I have every right to be mad. I have every right to be upset because I liked him. We had this thing. We had something. We might not have been official, but we had something. It was a thing. And Pete also told me that I have every right to be upset as well. So... Trying not to think I'm crazy, but everyone's telling me that I have every right to be upset. So I'm fucking upset, okay? Let me just tell you this. Me and Pete, at, after this point, we were just going back and forth arguing with each other for three days. This went on for three days after he told me. We are going to talk about the fight, the argument, the fight, the drama, the tea, the whatever. This entire thing is going to make absolutely no fucking sense. Just keep up with me, all right? Because this still baffles me to this day. At one point, he tells me that it's like he feels wanted by her. And he said, it's not like I didn't feel wanted by you. I really did like you. It's just different with her. Which, okay, I get. But like, also, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know the events. I can't remember. I should have wrote it down right when it happened. I should have screenshotted shit, but I didn't. I'm just going off the top of my head here. So we're just going to call day two, okay? I'm just like in this frenzy. I'm just like really heated. I'm really annoyed. So I post on Facebook, if you go after a friend's ex, you are literal trash. I don't fucking care. It's a general ass statement. I didn't tag anyone. I didn't say anyone's name. It was just a general statement. Later that night, guess who comes after me? And then all of a sudden I see Jamie messaged me and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. 
So I open the message and she's coming at me. If you want to make a status and talk shit about me and then delete me, that's fine. But I didn't know about you and Pete until it was too late. How can you consider us friends when when I don't even know when the last time we even hung out or even had an actual conversation? And then, I don't know, I feel like she said something else. Who fucking knows? I don't remember. So I replied back to her. I wasn't going to, but I'm like, you know what? I don't fucking care. I'm standing up for myself. I'm not going to, like, be silent. I deleted you because it makes me fucking sick looking at what you posted. I'm not going through that bullshit again. I said, you and Pete can do whatever the fuck you want. I just don't want to see it. And I said, I told him we used to be friends. Key word, used to. Yeah, we might not talk, we might not hang out, but we were really good friends at some point and I've never had a problem with you. If you want to think my status is about you, then go for it. She never responded to me. But continue on with the fight that me and Pete had, correct? The more we get into it, the more he's either lying to me, making up excuses, bullshit answers, I don't know. So he tells me, he said, the reason why we didn't date was because you're moving to California. And when I read that, I wanted to go off so fucking bad. The entire fucking situation. You always told me you didn't want anything serious because you were leaving for the middle of I was the one who said something about California. So this is what I told him. I was like, that is fucking bullshit. I don't know. I don't remember what was exchanged before this, but I remember exactly what he said. This is what he said to me. He saw me more as a best friend than anything else. He loved going places with me. He had a lot of fun with me. He really did like me, he said, but I didn't love you. What the fuck? Are you kidding me right now? So what is it? Are you lying to me right now? Or was the entire fling relationship thing, whatever you want to call it, was completely a lie. What the fuck did I just read? Like, who are you? You literally, you were not acting like this a week ago. So when I read that, I was like, you know what? I'm not responding to this. I have no words for this. That next day I had to work both my jobs. So I saw you Snapchat me. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait till I'm at my other job. I don't feel like dealing with this right now. I go, I'm at my second job. I open a Snapchat. I'm just sitting there and it said, if you don't want to talk anymore and lose our streak, I understand. I said, honestly, I don't know if I could look at you the same. I didn't think you were the type of person to do something like this. And then I, I was so hesitant and sent it and I sent it. Late, yeah, yeah, it was the same night as the message. All right, it's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. So the same night I got that message from Jamie was the same night this had happened. I saw he Snapchat me. I was going to like blow it off, not open it till the morning. I didn't want to deal with it. And then I don't know what struck me, if it was someone else who Snapchatted me or what, but I decided to open the app. And then literally the first thing I saw was Pete's name was just his username and our streak was gone. And I'm like, oh, so he deleted me off Snapchat. Right, 247 day streak, my highest streak at this point. <laughs> Is the last thing he said to me, I remember this vividly because this was the last thing he ever said to me, was... He said, do what? Question mark, exclamation mark, question mark. Fine, don't even look at me the same. I guess you don't want to be friends anymore. Sorry I fucked things up. And that was it. He did not give me a chance to respond to that at all. He just completely deleted me from it. So I'm like, all right. Like, I'm standing up for myself. And like, that's something I've never done or like, I don't ever do. And so the fact that I'm doing that and then I get blocked for it, like okay and so for a good week it really really bothered me because i'm like eight months like out of the whole time completely down the drain for what i guess i didn't mean that much or even matter to him at all because like if i did he wouldn't have deleted me he wouldn't have blocked me he wouldn't have continued to date jamie now here is where the t comes in <laughs> the funny part <laughs> After about a week, I kind of got over it. I'm like, all right, whatever. I've been doing stuff, keeping my, my, my mind off of it. A few weeks fl fly by. I get a message from Dakota on Facebook. And then he also texts me. He said, check your Facebook messages. So I opened his Facebook message. And it was a screenshot of Jamie's Facebook saying, <clears throat> <clears throat> you ready for this? I think that was the shortest relationship I've ever had. And I'm just like... <laughs> so basically... 
they're not together anymore. Literally over a few weeks. It lasted a few weeks and they're not together anymore. I opened that up and I was laughing. I'm not even mad about the situation anymore. I'm just kind of like over it. If he actually felt that way, if like he actually felt like he, I was more of a best friend to him than anything more, he could have told me that. And he didn't have to let this ruin something we had, a friendship we could have continued to have. Our situation, eight months of our situation, down the fucking drain. For what, a few weeks of bullshit? <laughs> And also, you know what's also so funny to me? Saturday, I was at work on Saturday and someone told me to look up their Instagram. So I went to Instagram to the search bar to start typing their username. I clicked the search bar and guess whose name is the first one to pop up in my search bar? It's Pete! So his name pops up and I'm like, what the fuck? That was my initial thought. I was like, what the fuck? Because he blocked me because I have the, un the f unfollower app thing. He blocked me. So why is his name popping up? So I clicked his name and it took me to his profile. He made his Instagram public and he unblocked me. So that makes me wonder, was he creeping on me? Because before his Instagram was private and now it's public, but also now I'm unblocked. I'm just like, I wonder how long it's going to take before he starts creeping up in my DMs because honestly, this is what happens. When guys fuck me over, somehow they eventually come back and they try a either again with me or they try to talk to me again. I don't see him the same anymore. Like, honestly, like, like if he talks to me, I might talk to him back. But also, like, it'll never be back to how it used to be between us. Like, I wanted to tell this story because it's like, you know, it's some pretty fucked up, crazy shit. And all I can say is, Karma's a bitch. Like, I don't have any hard feelings towards either, either of them anymore. I'm just like, you know, they will get what they deserve eventually. Personally, I don't think I did anything wrong in this situation. If he would have just been honest with me all from the fucking beginning, things would have been probably a-okay. But, you know, you want to lie to me? You want to fuck me over? You wanna block me? You wanna unblock me? Like, no, this is some like high school bullshit. Like, I'm 21 now. I'm not dealing with your bullshit. Like, sorry, not sorry. That is my story on how my friend stole my boyfriend. If you don't want me to make a video about you, don't fuck me over and don't give me a reason to. So, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want me to do any more story time videos, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell notification down below so you know when I upload a video. Other than that, I will see you guys next time, and keep living life with Rachel. Bye!